the heating is now off so we can take a look at the infrared heating experiment and see if it's worthwhile upgrading to a heat pump or not looking at this diagram this is our system at home so please be aware that we do have a lot of solar and we're also on the octopus intelligent tariff so um, we do try to make the most of our off peaks energy looking at the infrared panels that we do have in the home i thought i'd just do a quick recap we've got a 1200 kilowatt heater in the main lounge we have a 600 kilowatt heater in the games room we have a 400 kilowatt heater in the kitchen. We have a 200 watt kilowatt infrared heater in the downstairs loo. Um, all the bedrooms have 600 watt heaters in, apart from the small box bedroom, which has a 400 watt heater in. Before we get going on um, this last heating season, I thought we'd take a quick look at um, the 2021-22 heating system when we first put the infrared heating in do this just to make sure that we do get consistent results with the infrared heating even though i wasn't collecting as much data um, in the first year of having the infrared heaters so we used 4652 kilowatt hours across the heating system but electricity was a lot cheaper in 2021-22 so we had a grand total of 326 pounds altogether to heat the to heat the home in 2021 2022 and that's going to be hard to keep that cost exactly the same as what it was the year before because of the increase in electricity costs this year but we were on the octopus intelligent tariff which is a little bit more flexible than the octopus go that i was on in 2021 and the final facts is that we had all the bedroom infrared heaters coming on at 18 and a half degrees and going off at 19 and a half degrees and that's 24 7 and the downstairs we had coming on at 19 degrees and going off at 20 degrees and again that's 24 7 and the data which I'm, i can't really control and is probably the most variable is the outside temperatures and um, that's shown in the two blue lines here that's a minimum and maximum temperature outside again that's probably the biggest variable between the years of collecting data but there's very little we can do about that we had 20 days when we were below freezing um, the external temperatures outside the red line in this graph is the internal temperatures in the lounge just to give you some comparison of what we're actually holding the heat at in the home when we look at the data of how many kilowatt hours we used you can see that december and january were clearly the coldest months and we used more energy to heat the home and we used 4822 kilowatts in total to heat the home and i broke it down into each individual heater and you can see by far the biggest room in the house the lounge um, uses the most power to heat the home and vice versa the smallest room in the house which is the small box bedroom with a 400 watt heater used the least amount of power to heat the home interesting the loo actually was more than the box bedroom because of the um fact that that was on an outside gable wall and um, on the extension which seems to be a very cold room generally because of where it is there gets very little sun Moving on to the costs, um, December was uh, the most expensive cost at £224 for the month. Yes, that was nearly half of what we used in total. It was just used in December. And again, I broke down the costs for each heater here, um, totaling £500.52. pence. This graph here um, shows the peaks and troughs of how many kilowatt hours we used um, which is the blue line and as you can see we had a, a peak of 77.53 kilowatt hours in one day just for heating the home and again that was back in december and the red line is the cost per kilowatt hour per day so that is an average over being able to shift a lot of it to off peak so the most we paid for electricity over a single day was 25 pence per kilowatt hour the least was zero as the sun got better that's all the data collected so now we have to think about is it worth us going down the heat pump route um, to start off with we used 4822 and a half kilowatt hours 
um, using the infrared panels. Now, if we moved to an infra into a heat pump system, I reckon we could get that down probably to one and a half megawatt hours, or in the very, very worst cases, maybe um, two megawatt hours. But we could have a massive saving on our heating with a with the air to water heat pump that that um, could reduce our overall usage by the efficiencies you get from a heat pump now the costs uh, are going to be a little bit more complex to work out because we had a cost of 500 pounds give or take uh, a few pence but it's not just a case of reducing that down by by um, half or even what we use as one megawatt hour uh, per year because if we if we use less power it means our average cost per kilowatt hour will be less so potentially we could get our heating cost down to between 100 and 200 pound quite easily using a heat pump but that that actually is where the problem lies if we're going to spend a huge amount of money to install a heat pump um, the savings that we have over infrared heating is actually going to be very little especially when you're taking the fact that a heat pump would need servicing every year and also the install costs of a heat pump. A heat pump is going to cost us a really a minimum of £5,000 and maybe even as high as £10,000. But it's very difficult to tie it down directly how much a heat pump is going to cost. So my conclusion on infrared heating is, yes, it is a viable option. Um, and we could definitely um, put a heat pump in. We could save energy and we could save money but the install cost of a heat pump does not make financial sense especially when we already have the infrared heating installed and the relatively low maintenance it's the maintenance cost and the install costs would basically keep the heat the cost of running a heat pump at exactly the same as an infrared heating system especially when you're taking into account the maintenance every year of a heat pump so that's my current conclusion on heat pumps. However, if the cost of heat pumps come down, I would love to save more energy um, to stop us burning as much fuel and get the efficiency down. But it does have to make financial sense as well for us to do it. And thanks for watching. If you've got any questions or comments, please add it to the section below. I'm really interested to watch some other YouTubers with their infrared and their heat pump and air to air heat pumps and air to water heat pump solutions.